Okay. okay. Hey, everybody. Welcome to our first YouTube video. Um, tonight's just going to be an introduction to our team members. We have Sherry Mount. She is our case manager slash investigator. Um, we have another case manager, Jody Panarelli. Hope I said her name right. You'll get to meet her next week. Um, those two will be teaming up to, to handle our cases. We got Corey and Nicole that are the two lead investigators for the team. And Miss Stephanie is our investigator. And we also have Ryan. You'll get to meet him next week as well on the next video we do. Or there's maybe a cameo of one only of him because he's so fabulous. Mm -hmm. uh, today's going to be a day where you guys can just get to know us a little bit. Um, we do have some questions and I'm going to ask the team just basic ones that people seem to ask us a lot. I will start with Stephanie. Um, what got you interested in the paranormal? Um, it all started like when my grandmother passed. Um, I had weird things happen that I couldn't explain. And so I started, you know, those shows started on TV, like Ghost Hunters and all that. So I kind of got sucked into those and just always had an interest in the paranormal. Cool. And how did you join up with us? Um, I joined the team just because I was going to all the events. Like my first one, I was hooked and I just wanted to keep going to more places and do more investigating. And I just, I love doing it. and then I joined the team. <laughs> Sweet. And that was what, like a year ago that we brought you on? About a year ago? Yeah. I think it's been about a year now. About a year now. Okay. Yeah. You've done good for us too. Um, trying to think of questions that people have asked us. What, one of the biggest ones is, have you had any scary moments with the paranormal, anything that scared you? Or um, the only time I've really been scared is when I went to the Twila hospital and I was with my cousin. Um, he's had health issues for a long time and he started to have a seizure while we were there. And in all the panic of, you know, getting him to the hospital, like all of my skills that I learned went out the window. Like I forgot to make sure I was protected when we left. And at the hospital, we started having things happen that we couldn't explain, and it followed us to the hotel. And I just learned from there, like, you need to make sure that you're protecting yourself because you don't want to take something home with you because it's, it's not fun. <laughs> I remember that night. I remember getting the text saying, we're at the, we're at the hotel and crazy things are happening. Yeah, and I was terrified. Through it. Yeah, it's, it's pretty scary. Um, sometimes yeah. there's just things that happen that you can't explain stuff like to follow you home. That's one of our big things. And I think all of us have had it happen where something has followed us home. Even when we tell it not to, we've had stuff. I know I have it still, you know, they don't listen to me when I tell them not to follow it home. Um, I, when I die and I become a ghost, someone tells me not to do something. I'm going to do just the opposite of what they tell me not to do. So yep, exactly. <laughs> I'm a jerk that way. <laughs> <laughs> so that is Stephanie. We will go to let's go to Nicole. Yeah. Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> what got you into investigating? So I would say it was my husband, Corey here. Um he has been interested, I mean always interested in watching like paranormal shows and um, I actually, I can't remember how I heard about it. It was probably on Facebook. Our first investigation was with MNL um, at the Empress Theater. And that's when we first, well, I experienced paranormal activity, paranormal things. Like I've never been interested in it until that time, until we started investigating. And um, yeah, he got me into it. He's, it's, I really enjoy it. Sweet. So I think you kind of, um, hang on. I, sorry guys, I've got like a little cat in here that is just driving me insane with the clicking. <laughs> I don't know if that's annoying everybody else, but it's driving me insane. Um, so, and you joined up from, you joined up 
with our team pretty much the same way. I think most, I think everybody out there, you're going to hear the same story with most of these team members. They've all come to me through investigations. They've supported the team and I've watched them without them knowing I was watching them. And, and yeah, kind of spied on them. Yeah, that's creepy. <laughs> but Nicole, are you, um, you've been on the team for about a year, right? Yeah, I think about so. a year officially. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm now a lead investigator. So yes. <laughs> I was in training. And, <laughs> um, and then have you had a scary, like a, something that's not, I don't want to say scary, but something that has kind of freaked you out, made you learn something from it? You know, I, I keep trying to think of something scary or something I tried to learn from, but I can't think of a scary time. I mean, things can be alarming. I don't know. It's not something I was scared of, though. So I have yet to find something scary. <laughs> That's good. Good. It will happen <laughs> eventually. Um, let's do Corey next. Oh, Corey, I forgot to leave out. He's our lead cleanser. So we do house cleansings. We cleanse businesses. We cleanse people. He's actually the lead cleanser on my team. Um, he's done come in and he's done really good. He kind of just took over on that position and has learned it very well. He's helped a lot of people on other investigations that he's been on too. Um, so what got you into investigating? So I have had paranormal things happen to me my whole life. Um, I had these little uh, ceramic figurines of little bears that were playing different sports and they were on a shelf that was that was taller than I could reach because I was a kid. And they were always in different spots, different things moving around, doors opening. Um, so that, and I always thought that the, the houses were haunted. You know, so I was like, okay, so it's just, this is a weird house. My dad was in the military and we were stationed in Germany. Um, and so I was like, okay, this house is just funky. Something's up with the house. So then we moved to a different house in Germany. Same thing started kept happening. And then when we came back to America from Germany, same thing started happening. So I was like, okay, I'm haunted. Like, it's not the house, it's me. Something's wrong with me. So, um... I used to be really afraid of it because I didn't understand it, you know? Um, and then with watching all the different paranormal shows, I was like, I don't have to be afraid of this. This is just something that I can, you know, check out, see what it is, see what, why they're doing this. Are they intentionally being mean? Are they intentionally, or are they just trying to talk or are they pranksters or, mm. you know, and um, when I got on the team, um, like Nicole said, our first investigation was the Empress Theater. And I, if I remember right, that was Stephanie's first investigation with MNL2. Um, and then I was hooked. So we were going to every single event. And uh, I was getting, I was in contact with Lydia and everybody and trying to you know what equipment do I use? What is the best recorder? Um, how do I use a pendulum, like all the different, you know, techniques and stuff. And then, uh, then they asked me to join and I was like, absolutely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, and that was, I want to say for my 30th birthday, um, and I turned 33 this year. So, so this will be your third year with us. Mm -hmm. Wow. It took us a little bit longer to add Nicole. Just she would still come out on everything with us and support us. So we just figured it'd be good to add her to the team. Um, we added her and Stephanie about the same time. You just had to watch me more. Yeah. Yeah, we just had to make sure you were going to be good. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> um, and then, crap, what was my other question? Well, that's how you got involved with the team. What doing this since you've been doing this or even before Corey what was something that just kind of freaked you out a little bit about the paranormal um I don't know if you guys remember but we had these 
huge stack radios that like stood like three or four feet high. And you had your equalizer, your CD player, CD changer, cassette, surround sound processor, all that stuff. My dad had one of those in the living room. And uh, I, was, I would wake up with him at like five in the morning to get ready for school. So I'm brushing my teeth and the radio just turns all the way up. And so I'm like, oh man, I gotta go, you know, I don't know what's going on. So I go and I open the glass doors and I'm like, what the F bomb? And when I said the f part, all of my toothpaste just went all over the, the uh, front of the stereo. And I was like, my dad is going to kill me if I got toothpaste on his radio. So I went and got some paper towels and I came back and I was sitting on the ground and I had each door open, they were glass doors. And I saw these two kids sitting on my couch that just looked dead and like decayed. And they had, um, their eyes were all white. And there was a boy and a girl. And when I, I looked at the boy and I was like, oh, what the hell is that? And then I looked over at the girl and she smiled and I was like, nope, I'm out. <laughs> So I was in my boxers and I ran down the street to my friend's house and I was like, um, I just busted in his house and woke him up. I was like, dude, you got to come back to my house with me. And like, I have to get ready for school, but I'm not staying there by myself right now. <laughs> so that was, that was by far one of the scariest things that's ever happened. Sweet. That's that, that would freak me out too as a kid. Yeah. So I'd probably I was, have the uh, same reaction. I think I was 12 or 13 at the time. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I'd probably have the same reaction as a kid. Um, so we're going to move on to Sherry. So what got you into the paranormal? Um, mine started when I was a kid. It was basically the, the house I grew up in. We would had a lot of like footsteps, radios getting turned up. Um, seen like light in the, the hallway that would it would move and yeah basically just things from the house that we lived in sweet and um how did you it's been a while you've been with the team for i think i've lost track how long you've been with us it's been a while probably like four 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 or five years i think yeah and i was gonna ask you how you you met up with us yeah how did you um i came out on one of your investigations at I'm gonna say fort douglas was where i first um met you guys and i think i probably just found you on facebook and then you had an, a public event at fort douglas that i went on and again, she came out and supported us, and and we had, we brought her on board. Um, yeah. And then, have you had any experiences that have kind of startled you, freaked you out a little bit? Um, start. It's usually just people <laughs> kind of playing around sometimes when we're out doing things, but nothing like has ever really scared me. Just being good. started here and there by people. That's <laughs> sometimes the the living is more scarier than the dead. Yeah. Uh, there's been times where I think we've all been on investigations and somebody will do something or or walk into a room when you're there and you're not expecting it and it kind of startles you or makes a noise or bumps something and you jump ten feet in there because you're in the complete silence listening. And all yeah. of a sudden you hear someone make a noise and you jump and it, yeah. Well, I have living. heard my name, like in listening back to recorders, I've heard my name. That kind of bothers me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there's certain, yes, yes. I don't think I've ever caught my name on a recording. I did catch an app saying it. So I don't know what I would do if I heard something. I'd probably like jump out of my chair and try to find someone to play the recording too at that moment but I'm usually yeah. at work so none of those people would enjoy listening to it 
<laughs> it's much better to have people I know around that are interested in that, or my husband. Um, so that leaves me. Um, I've been interested in it since I was a kid. I think I was like probably four or five because it was before my mom married my stepdad. Um, I got with him. I was in my room and I remember seeing a witch and a wizard standing in the doorway. You know, and you know what a wizard looks like. They've got the kind of like a magician wizard. They've got the hat and all the fancy clothes and the witch looked like the typical witch to a young kid. I remember waking up freaked out. I told my mom about it. You know, parents when you're that age tell you, it's just your imagination. Go back to bed. You were dreaming. It happened a couple more times and they always stood in the doorway of my room. Never came in, never harmed me. Um, I kind of always saw things growing up. And then what really got me interested in it is I think I was like 14, 13 or 14, and I heard my my now husband and my brothers and sisters talking about this guy that used to live in our house. And it was a magician that used to live there years ago. My husband had seen him come into his room, and my sisters had been attacked by him. He grabbed their legs, tried to pull him out of bed, and when they described him, I asked him what he looked like, just being a curious kid, and they described him, and it was exactly what I saw to a T. So I talked to my mom about it, and she said, yeah, she's like, that's, that's him. She's only moved into the house. There's a room in our basement, and there's a big old mural of him painted on the wall. Like, he painted a photo of himself on the bedroom wall. Back in the 70s, corkboard was pretty awesome, so they put a corkboard over the wall. When I was down there playing and the cork board fell on me, like came off of the wall and it actually fell on me. I was about two. And they finally put the, the awesome seventies paneling up, which is still there in that room on top of the cork board. Um, but that really got me questioning how I could see something when I was younger and my brothers and sisters and everybody was seeing the same thing. And I started making, I had some friends that were interested in it too. I mean, when you're younger, we had our old analog recorders. We'd break into cemeteries. I know that's not the best thing to do, but we did. We'd go out on little excursions with our recorder and video, you know, record stuff. Um, in my early 20s, again, when Ghost Adventures came out, I started watching shows like that. And I thought, hmm, wow, people really do this. That's pretty cool. And I started following them on Facebook and MySpace at the time, because MySpace was a cool thing at the time. And I followed, I think, Ben Hansen. I followed him because I watched Fact or Fate, that kind of stuff. And we found a public investigation, the first public investigation I went on. I had started a team with a coworker that time and all got formed. An old coworker started it with me. And the first investigation I went on was one that was at the Fear Factory. And then they did one the next night in a little town called Ofer, um, which was pretty cool. I went on the Fear Factory and I was just hooked. I loved it. It was just the stuff that was happening, the stuff that we were getting. I bought a little recorder. It was just amazing to me. And those first two investigations doing them really got me hooked and I just started going out and learning from other people in the field. I've had some pretty good teachers that have that I've learned from. Um, so that's how I got into it and how the team was formed. And then I've had a couple of I did have an experience when I was a teenager that scared me. I'm not gonna go into detail about it. Um, but it really really scared me to the core and I went a lot of years being afraid of what happened to me and being in this field and doing this helped me come to terms with it and realize okay there's other people that need help that have these issues and they don't have anybody to go to they're as scared as confused as I was and I know what it feels like to be that way it sucks it really sucks so that's why we kind of do what we do um 
I know I picked up some pretty nasty attachments. Again, like everybody says, I really had to learn how to protect myself. It's all about protection. You know, you go into it with your, I think we've all done it. We've all been tired. We've had stress going on the day before. Something's just, we're not 100%, and that's when things latch on to me. I know I've had it happen to me, and it affected me for almost a month. I know Corey's been affected a few times by stuff like that. Um, and we, we're, we're getting pretty good at protecting ourselves. Sometimes it doesn't always work, but for the most part, we keep it out. One of the risks of doing it. Hmm? But that's one of the risks of doing this. Exactly. I know it's, it's about helping people. I think we all have the same the same views. I mean, it's fun to do. It's not, we're not running around in the dark screaming at spirits to try to create them with respect. And these guys have really come in and, and kind of made the team what it is, this crew right here that you're looking at, and the other two that are not on the video. Um, but they've kind of really made the team what it is. They've put it out there. They've given their heart and soul and passion to it. And I think... It's a good foundation. I think you guys are great. I don't know. I don't know. I think you're great. <laughs> well, I would hope. I would hope that. But um, oh, I agree with Lydia. I am pretty great. <laughs> I agree. I think you are. <laughs> you guys are super supportive. It's a good team, and and we love our fans and our followers. Without without you guys, without our fans and our followers, there wouldn't be us we wouldn't have, you know, the success that we do and the, the being able to bring you guys good events and, and educate you and, and all that stuff. So it's really our supporters to keep us going. Now that's a hundred percent true because that's how all of us got on the team. Mm -hmm. yep, exactly. exactly. You all supported me and well, you supported the team pretty much. And you know, I get a lot of questions asking, oh, how do I join your team? I want to join. Best way to join is to come out on our events. Come out on our events. You know, it's it's a process. It's not something where you say, oh, I'm going to add that person to the team. It, it's a process. You start out as an, an investigator in training, and then there's no given time on that. It's just whenever I feel you guys are good to be an investigator, a lead investigator, I did have have some other people on the team. Um, we kind of made decisions together. You know, we talked about you guys a lot. And now it's just me talking in my head. <laughs> it's just a common, a normal thing. It's, it's weird. Um, but yeah, this team is just great. They've done great things. We're going to do great things in the future too, I would hope. Mm -hmm. You know. Yes bring you guys great content. This is our first YouTube video, so we're new to this, so hopefully we're not super boring to you guys. Mm -hmm. um, I was gonna ask you too, what, since you've been doing this, what are you guys' favorite location, like of all time that you've been to? Hmm, I am thinking. You guys know what mine is, that's kind of a, I I really enjoy Salter. I um that's one of my favorites. I mean, I have a lot of favorites, but that's that's one of them. I really like Fort Douglas. Mm -hmm. But I'm trying to think of a different one. There was one that we were going to and I was like, "Yeah, I can't believe we get to go." <laughs> um but I cannot remember what that what that location was. For was, some it, was it Camp Floyd? No. Um, I'm trying to think of some that we've done. I think it. I think it might have been the Tooele Hospital. Oh, Asylum Forty Nine. When we I did think, it as a team. You're right. Yeah, because I was I was really excited about that. Nicole's dad was born there in the hospital um like her whole 
family on her dad's side is buried in the cemetery there. So we've been up there a bunch of times, but I was never able to actually go in the building. And I don't do haunted houses like <laughs> haunted houses because I don't try. Like we try to get him to go, but <laughs> I don't want to pay money to have someone jump around the corner and scare me. Like that to me is not fun. So, um, yeah, I think I think asylum. That was a. The whole night was crazy. Yeah, that one's always a good one. I love Asylum. It's it's always you always get something, something awesome there. And the thing that's, that's great is I had one person come out with us. She's a girl that I work with and she's like Corey. She doesn't like haunted houses. She doesn't want to pay to have someone jump out and scare her. So I can relate to that because our friend was like that. She didn't know when we took her that they keep some of the decorations up all year round mm. and they were in the middle of setting up for the haunt. So she was kind of already freaked out because she's in this place where she never, she, I think she went to one and that was, that was enough. So it kind of freaked her out with all the props being up. Um, and it is kind of freaky there because you see a prop and you think it's a person or something in it. Yeah. So, but it's a good location. I like it. I've gotten some good stuff there. So what would be yours, Lydia? Mine? Well, mine is one that you guys haven't done. Um, I've been there twice. It's the Overland Hotel in Pioche, Nevada. Oh. I've been there twice. And the first time we went, we got some pretty good activity. The second time we went, you know, it was me, Chris, and Max. Sam was sleeping in the other room and we were just going through our stuff, getting ready. None of us had recorders. You know, we were eating lunch. None of us had recorders going and they full on heard someone behind me go, hmm. And at that point we all realized, oh my God, I didn't hear it because I was talking, but they, they both got this weird look on their face. I'm like, what, did I drop something? You know, what's going on? You didn't hear that? I'm like, no. Why is nobody recording? <laughs> So I got our recorders and we caught a cup. We caught a kid's voice a few times. You know, it's it was pretty cool because there were no kids in this hotel room. We were, I think, there's only one other guest at that time that was booked there that Friday night. And me, Chris, and Max, we don't make high pitched noises and sound like that. There's no way. And we were just getting ready, you know, getting all our stuff out, getting unpacked. Um, I think that's one of my favorite locations. That one in Saltaire would be a toss up between those two. I just have a weird connection with Saltaire for some reason. So what about you, Steph? Um, I really love Fort Douglas. Um, that place is just, there's so much history there. It's the first place that I ever had my hair touched and I didn't freak out like I thought I would. <laughs> and we had confirmation that somebody did touch me. So um, that one is just, that's been my favorite one ever since the first time I went. What about you, Sherry? Um, my favorite place is burned down, so we can't go there. But um, the Barron Woolen Mill that was in Brigham City, there mm -hmm. always happened there, always. And a place that's left, probably Asylum 49. Sweet. Yeah, those seem to be the, the popular ones that we get a lot of activity on. Um, what is it? That must be a dog whining. I heard like a high pitch. It sounded like it was right behind me, but I think it's the noise traveling back here into my office from the dog sorry if you guys hear barking or whining it's my dogs they're noisy and bratty and yeah i've had to get after my dogs a couple times so sorry about that <laughs> oh no i'm good i think everybody knows i think we all have dogs so um if you hear barking whining even growling it's probably someone's dog if you hear that when you're watching this, don't tell us because i don't want to know that there's growling in my house just like a saltaire <laughs> when I caught what I thought was a goofy laugh, and everybody's like, no, that's a pig snorting. I'm like, oh, no, no, <laughs> no, 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 that's a goofy laugh, because I was in that room alone all night. That, that's a goofy laugh. It's not a pig snorting. Don't mm -hmm. tell me there's a pig snorting in the room with me. 
-hmm. but it wasn't extorting the more when I listened to it. Yes. Yeah. I want to hear that stuff from my own house. I don't mm -hmm. want to investigate my own house. No, 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 no. Mm -hmm. um, so we do have, we did put out a, a thing on Facebook and please watch our Facebook page. We'll ask questions. Um, so if you see us post something up, it's because we're doing a video and we kind of want to include you guys, our fans in it. So we had one question asked and it's from Susanna Maxwell and she wanted to know, um, given the chance, where would we like to investigate? I will go first and I know I am going to butch this name because I don't speak Japanese. But I don't know if you guys have heard of it. There's actually a movie called The Forest that came out. If you haven't seen it, you need to watch it. It's the suicide forest in Japan. It's called Aokigaharu. I know if I asked my mother-in-law, she could probably pronounce it right off the bat. And I know I totally butched that. <laughs> um, but just watching the movie and after I watched the movie, you know, you see these movies... I don't know about you guys, but I know about me when I'm watching a ghost movie and I find out it's based off of a location that's actually haunted. As soon as the movie's over, I'm looking it up and I'm, I'm trying to find it and find out as much as I can. And I've always wanted to go to Japan and that, that has intrigued me. I know that they say people don't come out of it alive, and, but I'm one of those where I want to experience it for myself. Yeah. Now, same with the Island of the Dolls in Povali. I want to go to those two places. Again, Island of the Dolls people don't come out alive, apparently. They get lost on it, but I would like to experience it, and it's on my bucket list. So those are my three top locations. Or anywhere in, like, Europe, castles, London, places like that would be cool. Uh, yeah. My first thought was Alcatraz. Um... Nicole and I were able to go there um, a few years ago, but we just did like the little guided self tour. But I mean, the energy in there was funky. It's, it was, I'd like to just have like a good 12 hours, like, and sleep there or something. Um, and then pretty much anywhere in Germany. There's one Germany I remember called Neuschwanstein Castle. Um, it's really beautiful, but I remember like all the castles there have legit dungeons and like torture rooms and stuff. So it'd be interesting to go to a medieval castle and, you know, see what what is there. Um, and then also there's quite a few different spots in Ireland that I would like to check out. So, um, one of them is, it's, uh, Husker <clears throat> Castle, and it's this castle that has no purpose for it to be there, but back in the day, people swore they saw demons coming out of the ground, so the best thing they thought to do was build a big castle on top to keep it shut. <laughs> I mean, it has, there's, there's no military benefits of the location of the castle you usually want the castle in a spot where you can attack down on people and this is just like a flat land with nothing around and then boom random castle so i'd like to check that out and the inside's supposed to be all crazy and uh yeah so that's definitely that's my top three so i guess europe in general <laughs> and <Alcatraz. laughs> What about you, Nicole? Um, I would say Salem. Um, I bought this book um, about different um, haunted places. And the part, well, I haven't finished the book yet. I need to keep reading. But Salem sounds the most interesting to me, all the history. And um, just going there, I think that would be awesome. That would be, and see, since we're married, we both have to go to the places together. So, <laughs> um, I'm down. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that would be, that actually makes sense. 
I don't know. Nicole could leave Corey and go on a girl's trip. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> Man. What about you, Steph? <laughs> <laughs> Um, a really big one for me is the Stanley Hotel. Uh, that one I for sure is on my bucket list. Um, Waverly Hills is another really good one I want to go to as well. Um, and like you guys said, like Europe, anywhere in Europe would be awesome. Sweet. What about you, Sherry? I would like to go back to the Stanley. I went there last year. I'd like to go back there and, and spend more time there. Um, um, Europe, yeah, anywhere, and um, probably like Gettysburg, like check out that area. I always forget about that one. We gotta start planning some team trips. That's it. Yep. Team trips, one a year. Do you have more than one? Europe. <laughs> <laughs> See, now you two are on the same page with Europe. There you go. <laughs> I think Salem, I think a lot of us have a lot of the same places we want to go. Um, Salem would be cool for me. You know, Alcatraz. I lived in, in Alameda, California, and I went over to San Francisco a ton. And that was back before you purchased a lot of stuff online, and you had to go there to purchase it. And, you know, the internet, doing it wasn't exactly popular. It was in the early 2000s. And every time I got over there, those tours were sold out by the time I got over there. So you had to book them quick. I mean, people go out day, a couple days in advance and book the tickets, and I never had a chance to. So when we go over there, I still want to do the Alcatraz tour. So there's a lot of, um, a lot of places that I think all of us would like to go together. Lots of team trips. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, I mean the ones in out of the country might not yeah. happen, yeah. but you know, because that's, that's pricey. Uh, but yeah, that's. I think that's. I think all the stuff you guys said is stuff that I want to do. You know, there's like the Queen Mary that I want to go visit. Mm -hmm. um, Waverly Hills is one that would be cool, and. You know, the TB hospital up in Idaho, that one would be cool to go do. Yeah. Uh, there's just... I would like to check out the um, Winchester house also. Oh, yeah. yeah. Just because it's such a, I mean, it's such an oversized Pee Wee's playground. <laughs> you know I mean? Like, I don't know, it would just be cool to see the architecture and the how it was built. Just open up a door and like fall out of it, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. 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 Luckily, I was looking for Nicole not at risk. No. <laughs> <laughs> Corey, what? Corey goes through all the doors first. Yes. I'll yeah. that to you. <laughs> you said chivalry, Steph. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, I walk into walls without there being. I just walk into them because that's me. Yeah. 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 I've had killed myself on an investigation. Mm -hmm. Another good thing about being tired is I, you know, with investigating, you have to be on your game. You're tired. At Asylum 49, it got me. They have these huge stairs when you're going out. And one's bigger than the other. And I was tired. I had a bunch of equipment on my hand. Misjudged the step and rolled my ankle. Yeah. And that was like, Four, four, and he was like five weeks in a boot, and so that's again another reason. But we'll go over that too. We're gonna do what, an episode on protection and and knowing your surroundings, that kind of stuff. So I think that's it for tonight. Thanks to our fans for watching, and we will post more content here shortly. Be sure to give us a like. Uh, invite your friends to like our YouTube when we hit a thousand subscribers on our youtube page nicole hasn't agreed to it we haven't talked to sherry yet but stephanie and corey and myself will get some kind of m l logo tattooed on us and it will be where we do it all together and we will live stream it Yay. so you our fans will get to watch um 
that we have to get a thousand subscribers first on YouTube. So invite your friends to, to like it, watch our videos. Uh, as soon as we hit a thousand, we will get those tattoos. I don't know if Sherry and Nicole are on board with it, but I'm thinking. I'm I've been wanting one for a while, so I have one in mind that will incorporate M L into it. Corey's gonna get one on his forehead. No. And bright hot pink no. letters. Yes. Big enough. <laughs> well thanks for watching guys we love you and we will and I see want, you i just want to say there's going to be so much more we're going to talk about and just so much more you can learn about and if you guys watching come up with any ideas of something you want us to do a video on we're going to have interviews with people uh, that we know and if there's anything that you guys want us to do, comment up on our Facebook page. Let us know, hey, I'd like to see you guys cover this topic or do this. We've got so much coming up, protection, the types of spirits. There's just, we have like a whole two month load of videos that we're gonna be doing to, to bring you guys some content. I know it's downtime right now with the COVID and everything going around. We haven't been able to do much. Even as a team, it's been hard to get out. And, and do stuff together which we're trying to do now that they've loosened up some restrictions it'll be easier for us to do that but we're trying to find ways to stay in touch with our fans and keep you guys entertained hopefully we don't put you to sleep for an hour <laughs> on our videos we'll try not to you know i can make the dogs bark in the background more you know <laughs> we do little dances for you he's really good at it <laughs> All right, well, we will talk to you guys next week. Hey.